Hey guys, I'm back with the cytoskeleton and the cell wall. But before I get started, I forgot to mention the peroxisomes in the last video, or video before last. So I just want to mention those so you have some information on those. Peroxisomes are another type of digestive enzyme, sac, kind of like lysosome, but they're found in both plants and animals, and they do basically two functions. Number one, they break down fatty acids into sugars, which make it easier for the mitochondria to make energy out of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And number two, they detoxify the cell. They actually break down the alcohol and the poisons, kind of like the smooth ER helps in detoxification of the cell. Now, as a side note, I put down here, peroxisomes actually produce peroxide, which you know of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. And whenever it is broken down, it releases water. So think of, you know, I kind of think of it like this, you know, if, if it's doing a lot of detoxification and it's breaking down uh, poisons, then you have to go to the bathroom because water is being produced as a byproduct. Okay, <clears throat> let's get into the cell and the cytoskeleton. First of all, let me give you a little quiz. Which one of these do you think is the plant cell? And by looking, I hope you can tell that this one here is the plant cell and the other one is the animal cell. All right. Now, let's go to the cytoskeleton, which we're going to talk about today. Um, the cytoskeleton is exactly what it says. Skeleton does exactly what it does in you. The skeleton in you gives you support and allows you to stand upright, gives your uh, muscles something to grab hold of so it can move. Um, same thing in the side of the skeleton. It's going to give it structural support, which means it's going to make, let the cell maintain its shape, just like your skeleton does in you. I've got some parts down here um, that are involved in structural support, the microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and the microtubules. We'll talk about the microtubules on the next couple of slides. The intermediate filaments and the microfilaments, uh, I don't mention those specifically, but realize that all of these are protein fibers that are going to deal with how the cell is, shape is or dealing with the anchorage of organelles within the cell. Um, the next one is motility or the ability to move. Um, the main two things that are involved here are like cilia and flagella. Uh, we'll briefly mention those. And think about motility, think about muscles being able to grab hold of your skeleton. That's what allows you to move, the antagonistic nature of the muscles. Uh, so cytoskeleton is going to help in motility and regulation. It's going to help keep organized. It's actually going to be involved in things like uh, mitosis and meiosis with the creation of the centrioles. So we'll talk about each one of these very briefly. Uh, look at the centrioles first. These are microtubules. Um, they're found in animal cells. And if you remember, whenever we were in biology, there was these little things that formed at each end of the cell when the chromosomes were lined up in the middle. And the spindle fibers came out and carried the chromosomes that way, and the spindle fibers came out and carried the chromosomes this way. Um, those little ends here, here, and here were the centrosome or the centromere, uh, centrioles. So centrioles are involved in mitosis. Um, now, cilia and flagella, um, they both have structural support. They're both, they're both um, dealing with microtubules. And cilia, I think of as having a large number of cilia, and flagella is a single flagella. Uh, another difference between cilia and flagella, cilia tend to move um, back and forth like an oar, whereas um, flagella do an undulating movement up and down. All right. Now, let's briefly mention the cell wall. The cell wall is found mostly in prokaryotes, fungi, and in some protists. Um, I guess I should have put plants up there as well. Um, they, it protects the cell. It maintains its shape, and it prevents excess uh, uptake of water. It prevents the cell from exploding if it was put into a hypotonic solution. It also gives the, the, the plant the ability to resist the force of gravity. This is why plants are able to grow up, even though gravity is pushing down. Now, in animal cells, we, animal cells do not have a cell wall, so they have what's called an extracellular matrix, we serve a lot of the same functions, and it's dealing with collagen fibers and and glycogen molecules, etc., that are, are an extensive network that help give support to the cell. Um, the last thing is cell junctions. When you have two cells side by side, they have to be linked together in some way. 
Now, plants have what we call plasmodesmata, which I'm going to talk about. And animal cells have three types, tight, disjunct, tight junctions, desmosomes, and gap junctions. Let's go to the plant first. The plasmodesmata is basically a channel that allows cytosol to pass between cells. And as you can see it down here, here is the plasmodesma here. It's found in the middle. And then if you look, you got cytosol here. So that cytosol is what's between the actual cells. Okay. Animal cell junctions, a tight junction, is when cells are side by side or fused very tightly. It prevents water loss or, ex ex or fluid loss. Think of tight junctions. I often think of kidneys when I think of tight junctions or bladder. Tight junctions are formed with those cells on a regular basis. They prevent leakage from whatever component it is surrounding. Um, the desmosomes are like the anchoring junctions. They, they anchor things down. They're like sh rivets on a strong sheet, you know. Uh, gap junctions are how things communicate. Um, they allow cells to talk to one another. Now, that's pretty much the, the end of the cytoskeleton. I hope that helped you a little bit, and I'll talk to you later.